When I say electric roadster, your mind probably jumps to Tesla and their lineup of mainstream EVs. But did you know the world's first affordable electric roadster was actually this Renaissance Propka produced during the 1990s? With its Corvette styling and rear wheel powertrain, the Tropica promised a fun driving experience at a low price. So why on earth am I standing in front of this extremely boring and seemingly ordinary warehouse complex? Well, this building behind me actually plays out an incredibly important role in our story today. Stick around and you just might find out why. During the early 1990s, many major auto brands were beginning to experiment with electric cars. Products like the GM EV1 and Chrysler TE van made waves around the world as a trendy, futuristic alternative to the noisy gas-powered cars of the era. As a result of the heightened interest, a few small brands popped up around the country trying to cash in on the newborn demand. One such brand was Renaissance Cars Incorporated. Based out of Palm Bay, Florida, they hoped their Renaissance Tropica Cruiser could steal its own slice of the blossoming electric car market. The Renaissance Tropica was announced for production in early January of 1994 at the North American International Auto Show, which is now more commonly known as the Detroit Auto Show. And on paper, it presented some promising credentials. A dealer network on both the East and West Coast was set up, and a marketing plan advertised it as a fun city commuter, perfect for the retirement communities that overran its home state. Sadly, the Tropica car itself was rather less promising. It was extremely bare bones and didn't come with many of the features car owners had become accustomed to. Reviews said the concept car shown at the auto show lacked a speedometer, had no seatbelts, and featured some pretty shoddy build quality. Undeterred by the poor press coverage, Renaissance cars moved ahead with what was touted as the world's first affordable electric roadster. And the production model was definitely an improvement. It was a far more complete product than the failed concept, but retained the fun styling that set it apart from other cars of the era. The Tropica was offered at a low $13,000 price tag. Plus, customers would qualify for a $1,000 EV tax credit on top of that. Adjusted for inflation, that means the car would cost around $20,000 in today's money. And for that price, customers would get a really eye-catching vehicle. The Renaissance Tropica featured an aerodynamic nose cone on the front that improved driving efficiency for a longer battery range, while the back came with iconic Corvette taillights to complete the look. A curved windshield and a bright chrome roll bar were added to finish off the car and keep passengers safe in the event of a crash. The overall design was playful and stylish, and the open top layout meant it was the perfect choice of transportation for warmer climates like Florida. But in reality, the convertible form was really adopted to keep costs low. Leaving the roof off meant less material had to go into building the car, and it wouldn't need an expensive air conditioning system. Plus, it provided a great excuse to use cheap interior bits as well. Everything on the inside of the Tropica is either hard plastic or vinyl, which means it's waterproof and resistant to harsh outside elements but also that it's pretty cheap, uncomfortable, and has generally poor build quality. Critics once again poured dirt all over the Renaissance Tropica, making claims that it was barely more than a glorified golf cart. And those accusations weren't entirely unfounded either. The Tropica had poor performance even by the electric car standards of the 90s. Like most EVs, it came with no transmission or gear selector, and it was powered by two small electric motors mounted on the rear axle, one for each wheel. These motors received their electricity from a lead-acid battery pack, which Renaissance said would need to be replaced after around three years of use. Acceleration was weak at best. The car took a mind-blowing six and a half seconds to reach even 30 miles per hour. It was barely legal to use on the highway, with its top speed of a little over 60 miles per hour, and the range was rated at an even more abysmal 50 to 100 miles before it had to be pulled in to recharge. While other cars in the EV industry were experimenting with new innovations such as regenerative braking to improve the range on their offerings, the Renaissance was left notably bare of such technologies in order to keep costs low. Sadly, even the low purchase price couldn't save the Tropica. After the disappointing concept showing at the Detroit Auto Show and the poor press reviews of the product model, Renaissance cars failed to achieve a second round of funding and the company was forced to close its doors. These doors, in fact. Actually, from my research, it appears that this is the original headquarters of Renaissance Cars Incorporated, the base of all operations. This warehouse right behind me, from my research, if it's correct, is where every single Renaissance Tropica was born. 
It's rumored that around 16 to 25 cars were completed before the company ultimately met its fate and demise and failed to find that second round of funding. And although it's unclear whether these 20-ish models were for showing at the dealerships or were actually sold to customers, it is pretty well known that just about every one of them rolled out of the warehouse doors right here in Palm Bay, Central Florida. And I believe in this exact spot where I stand today. The rise and fall of the Renaissance Tropica is really one of the most fascinating stories in recent automotive history and it's a model that definitely helped pave the way for more mainstream models to come in and stake their claim on the electric car world. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out some of the other videos I've done by clicking on one of the cards on the screen right here. I cover all sorts of niche automobiles and affordable exotics and kit cars. Also, make sure to subscribe by hitting that red subscribe button down below. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload another one of these really cool videos. But again, thank you so much for watching. Remember to leave a thumbs up and I'll see you all next time. Peace.